Hello there, everyone. Welcome back to Home Media Reviews. As you saw in the title, and if you watched last week's episode, today's review is on X-Men Days of Future Past, also previously known as the best X-Men movie to date before Logan came out. Let's not waste any time. Let's jump right into the history section of X-Men Days of Future Past. So X-Men Days of Future Past hit theaters on May 23rd, 2014. And I guess now I'm telling these stories during the history section about how and when I saw this film. Uh, I originally saw this film back in theaters in 2014. This came out right after I had graduated 8th grade and was going into high school. So this was one of the last movies I saw when I was still in middle school. And this was around the time I was really starting to get into the whole cinematic loving mode that I'm in right now. Uh, just the fact that, you know, this was a comic book film and I was really excited for it. The trailers looked amazing. And when I got out of the theater, I loved it. Uh, I think I reviewed this originally back in 2014 because uh, this was when I had a YouTube channel. So I think I reviewed this when it first came out. There's probably a really crappy review of it on my channel right now. I saw it with a friend of mine, which we're still friends today. We've seen every X-Men movie together, except for Logan. Uh, we've seen every mainline X-Men movie together. Um, we saw this, Apocalypse, and Dark Phoenix together. And yeah, I just loved everything about this film. It really spoke to me and said, hey, X-Men movies can actually be good. Because I'm pretty sure I had seen First Class by the time this came out. X-Men Days of Future Past came out on Blu-ray slash DVD slash 3D Blu-ray on October 14th, 2014. I remember shooting a vlog going to get this movie on Blu-ray from Walmart and everything um, back in the old days when my vlogs were just, hey, let's go to a place, look movie, and they were like five minutes long. And as per usual, there were a plethora of different versions for you to pick up. There was a 3D Blu-ray collector's version that came with a replica of Magneto's helmet. This is probably the best edition of the film that's ever been put out because the replica of Magneto's helmet, while it's not life-size, you know, you can't put it on your head and wear it or anything like that, it's still pretty awesome that it came with an actual replica of the helmet. Like, that's, that's amazing. I don't think this was a retailer exclusive. I couldn't find any information on if it was or not. I think it was just a collector's version that you could pick up from anywhere. There was a Walmart exclusive 3D Blu-ray and regular Blu-ray. However, I don't know what's exclusive about it. I can't tell from this artwork that's on the screen right now, and I couldn't find any info about what was exclusive about it. So if any of you all know, please tell me. There was another Walmart exclusive that apparently didn't include a digital copy. There was just a Blu-ray. So you could get a version that had a digital copy and a version that removed it. That's kind of weird. There was a Target exclusive Metal Pack version not a steel book. Some people say it's a steel book, but it's not. It's a metal pack because of the way that the side is put out. Best Buy had the exclusive steel book, which honestly I think Target's artwork looks better than Best Buy's artwork, but Best Buy's an actual steel book and the, the spine of it looks actually not like garbage. Like metal packs look like complete garbage in terms of spines. On March 1st, 2016, Days of Future Past hit 4K which was the first time the film had been reprinted in two years, I believe, a little a little under two years, you know, 2014, 2016. There was a first class slash Days of Future Past 2 film collection that was re released on April 19th, 2016. This had both a Blu-ray and a DVD version put out. Fox really likes to do this with their films. They're like, oh, here's a two-movie collection, here's a three-movie collection, when... The trilogy or quadrilogy or the saga is not actually complete. They did this with Star Wars back when Phantom Menace and Attack of the Clones came out. They did like two movie collections of those prequels and it's like, we know there's going to be a third one. Why would you buy that? Same thing with this. This was 2016. This was when Apocalypse was coming out in theaters. Why would you pick up the two movie collection when you know there's going to be a third film? On that same day, there was also a Blu-ray and DVD reprint of this film that included a brand new slipcover that had blue Jennifer Lawrence, 
or Mystique, which is funny enough because that's the same poster art that Google Play has been using for like the last five years. It's not very good poster art. You should probably change that. I mean, it's blah. It's literally just Mystique. It's, there's nothing interesting about it. It's just Mystique. On October 4th, 2016, we got a Blu-ray Beginnings trilogy, meaning we got X-Men First Class, Days of Future Past, and Apocalypse all in one nice little package, making the two-movie collection completely useless. There was a 4K version, but it's not coming for another couple of years, so we'll talk about that later. On November 1st, 2016, this was included in the X-Men collection, including all of the X-Men films. Although I don't think it included Deadpool, because... <laughs> but why would you include Deadpool in an X-Men collection? I mean, that's really not an X-Men film. It's a Deadpool film. And a damn good one at that. There was a reprint of the X-Men collection in January of 2017, but it uses the same poster and everything, so there's really no reason to even note that. There was a 4K three-pack exclusive to Walmart put out on June 13th, 2017 that included First Class, Days of Future Past, and Apocalypse. There was a regular Blu-ray reprint with a new slipcover and a DVD was included on February 18th, 2018. Reason that is significant is because the Blu-ray put out in 2014 didn't have a DVD included. Now we have a combo pack coming out in 2018. There was another Blu-ray reprint in March of 2018, but this included some Deadpool 2 ticket cash. You, I read that wrong. That's a 3D Blu-ray reissue. 3D Blu-ray reissue with the Deadpool 2 free ticket included. And then on May 15th, 2018, we got the Deadpool photo bomb slipcover version of X-Men Days of Future Past, which I love these Deadpool photo bombs. There was yet another Blu-ray and DVD combo pack issued on October 1st, 2018. However, it did not include a digital copy. Then finally, on April 30th, 2019, there was a 4K version of the Beginnings Trilogy released, as well as the X-Men Trilogy Volume 2, meaning that it was the Beginnings Trilogy. You know, the first three X-Men films were put out under the moniker of X-Men Trilogy Volume 1. This was Volume 2. There was a Steelbook released, and um, yeah, I think that's it. I'm not seeing anything else. So you'll notice the most common trend with X-Men Days of Future Past is Fox really likes to include this in collections. They don't really like to put things, at least the X-Men films, out just by themselves they really like their collections because they can charge more for those because there's more discs and more films included and whatnot it had its initial r release in 2014 and it's had a pretty lengthy lifespan so i can't really fault them too much but all that being said let's move right along to the close-up section for x-men days of future past Alrighty everyone, here's your close-up look at X-Men Days of Future Past. We're starting off here with the OG Blu-ray, which I picked up day of release. I think I did a vlog on this when it first came out, uh, but I really like that sheen on the slipcover. Look at that. Isn't that nice? Blu-ray plus digital HD up at the top. Sentinels X-Men Days of Future Past with Wolverine, Magneto, Professor X, Quicksilver, Mystique, Young Magneto, Young Professor X, and Beast. Really like this poster. It's really awesome. 20th Century Fox logo. There's Wolverine and Mystique. X-Men Days of Future Past. Storm and Beast with the Blu-ray disc logo down at the bottom. The back also has some really cool artwork to it. You've got a blurb up here, barcode here. Mystique, Young Magneto and Young Professor X. Wolverine, Old Magneto and Old Professor X. Symmetry. You have an hour of extraordinary huh, special features with... Uh, some of them listed there. An electrifying ride, quote, digital HD, uh, little advert there, and legalese down at the bottom. Take this slip cover off here, put it there. No, like, rainbowy sheen to it, but it still has the uh, really awesome poster. The back is changed, which is interesting. I'm not sure if this blurb is the same 
is on this one. I didn't bother to read it because I don't really care. And then you've got legalese and uh, tech specs down there at the bottom. Digital HD advert is still there as well. Open this up. There's your Blu-ray disc. No DVD included in this. This was not a Blu-ray and DVD combo pack. Although there were some released later on, just not in this. Take some of these uh, inserts out here. Here's what your inside looks like. It's a standard uh, recyclable Blu-ray case, which I hate because they don't protect the disc at all. Here's one of the inserts I pulled out. This is a little uh, X-Men Days of Future Past fan art booklet. This was included in every single regular version of X-Men Days of Future Past. It wasn't exclusive to anywhere. Here are your artists. And basically, these are fan-made posters for the film. And a lot of them are really awesome. I especially like this one. This one's really cool. So is this one. And so is basically all of them. These, uh, these fans really did a good job. The other inserts are... Download the free X-Men Movie Cerebro app, which probably doesn't work anymore. And uh, you can watch X-Men Days of Future Past and get a second screen experience. And then here's a digital copy slip with Dawn of the Planet of the Apes advertisement on the back of it. We're not done yet, folks. We have one more copy of X-Men Days of Future Past to look at here, and it's a bit of a big one. If you recall, in the history section, I mentioned a very large and pretty awesome exclusive version of X-Men Days of Future Past. The uh, version that came with the replica of Magneto's helmet, that's this. <laughs> you can see it's rather big. Um, right here we've got X-Men Days of Future Past on the, uh, the front and or the back. There's the top of the box. The other side just has an X. Here's how you can tell this is the back because you get the barcode there. X-Men Days of Future Past again. Copyright information down at the bottom, and the other side just has an X. The bottom doesn't have anything. This thing's pretty huge, actually. I think I'm going to have to zoom the camera out just a little bit here. There we go. So we can actually see what's in this thing. So let me just open it here. And you'll notice here in the front, in a little compartment here in this styrofoam piece, your 3D version of X-Men Days of Future Past. The artwork has changed a little bit. You know, you got silhouettes down at the bottom instead of full-on character shots. But now it says, Ultimate Version, Blu-ray 3D, Blu-ray and Digital HD. Still no DVD, though. Includes a 3D version of the movie and a sneak peek of Exodus, Gods and Kings. The spine, old Magneto and young Magneto. The other spine is old Professor X and young Professor X. In the back, front artwork is pretty much the same. Wolverine and Mystique instead of either Professor X or Magneto. The back breaks down the features as well as your two discs and what they are. Open this up. Same regular Blu-ray as included in the uh, regular Blu-ray that we looked at earlier. And like I said, there's your fan art book again. It's exactly the same as the one we saw earlier. Hasn't been changed. And here is, if it would turn, that'd be nice. Here's your 3D Blu-ray with Old Magneto and Young Magneto. But I didn't buy this set for just the 3D Blu-ray. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't have a 3D TV. I don't need the 3D Blu-ray. Matter of fact, I kind of hate home 3D. I bought this set, one, because it was cheap at FYE, and for the replica Magneto helmet. So let me just go ahead and pull this big styrofoam piece out of the way throw that box over there here's your big styrofoam piece this is where the helmet is you take off the top there's the helmet it's not full size or anything I can't put this on my head it's it's a mini replica but it is still very nice and high quality there's what your replica helmet looks like a little bit top heavy holding this with one hand you've got an X on the base there as well like I said it's a really high quality piece okay so after that huge collector's version of X-Men Days of Future Past that wraps up your close-up let's go ahead and move right along to the menu tours alright everyone here we are for a menu tour of X-Men Days of Future Past 
You'll notice this is very similar to the Kingsman menu, which we took a look at in a previous episode of this season. And that's because this is another Fox release. You know, you've got your options down here at the bottom and scenes from the film playing in the background, which is nice. Play, setup, audio, we have a 7.1 English mix, English descriptive audio, Spanish, French, Portuguese, what? Huh? I don't know. These are the, those are the same audio options we had on Kingsman, and I didn't know what those said either, uh, but those are the, your audio options. Subtitles include English, Spanish, Dank is back. Or I think that's Danish, actually. Suami, Norse, Portuguese, huh? Savenska, that might be a Russian form, I don't know. What? If Chinese or Japanese? No, not even going to try that, nope. East, I think I said for Kingsman that was East. Indonesian, what? Latvian, I think I said for Kingsman. <laughs> Malay, Spanish, no, not Spanish. Japanese or Chinese, huh? That doesn't even look like a word. That looks like a collection of letters. Slovensky, that's it. I didn't even bother trying to read those last two. Search, scenes. How many scenes do we have? Let's find out. The movie is, of course, 2 hours, 11 minutes. In 35 seconds, as you can see on your screen right now, we have 40 scenes. And that is including the end credit scene, which I kind of like because, you know, Marvel films in both Fox's X-Men universe and in the MCU, they have end credit scenes. And a lot of times, the end credit scenes don't have their own chapter. So you have to skip through all of the credits to get to the end credit scene. And I like that this one actually has the end credit scene as a... Uh, as its own chapter, so I don't have to skip through the credits. Uh, for extras, you have deleted scenes, kitchen sequence, which is a breakdown of Quicksilver running through the kitchen when they break Magneto out of prison, gag reel, double take, Xavier and Magneto, X-Men reunited, classification M, Sentinels for a secure future, you have a gallery for Trask Industries, theatrical trailers, second screen app, and a sneak peek of Exodus, Gods and Kings. So that, ladies and gentlemen, wraps up your menu tour. Let's go ahead and head on back and answer the five main questions, as always. Okay, welcome back from the close-up. Now it's time to answer the five main questions, as always. Number one, where do you pick this product up? You can't find X-Men Days of Future Past by itself anymore. The 4K is virtually non-existent just on its own. You can still find the 4K in those three packs and the trilogy sets and whatnot. Honestly, check your local Best Buy. They're becoming really the only place that has a good stock of physical media like Blu-rays. Target's pretty okay, but you're probably not going to find the trilogy set there. Walmart sucks with physical media now. They used to be great, but now they're terrible. So check your local Best Buy. Number two, is this product still being printed nowadays? God, I really want to say yes to this, but I can't because the most recent reissue of this was over a year ago in 2019. We're not in 2019 anymore, so I'm going to have to say no. Number three, should you pick this product up? I can say yes to this. X-Men Days of Future Past is still fantastic. This movie's main gimmick, I guess I'll say, is that it's blending the old X-Men cast with the new slash old X-Men cast, because they're going to turn into the old people at some point, with the new X-Men cast. You know, you've got Professor Xavier, played both by James McAvoy and Patrick Stewart. You've got Magneto, or Eric Lencher, played by Ian McKellen, and also Michael Fassbender. Side note, I have a funny story about uh, Magneto's real name. When I first started, like getting involved in the community and getting involved in Skype with a lot of people. My Skype name was Eric Lencher, which was the real name of Magneto. And some people thought that Eric Lencher was my real name. So I was under the moniker of Eric from, I think, 2014 to around mid-2016 was when people started realizing, hey, Eric's not his real name because I confirmed it wasn't my real name multiple times. I was like, guys, that's Magneto's real name. And they were like, who's Magneto? And I'm like, ah, how do you not know this? But I think it did a fantastic job at blending these casts together. I mean, the casts don't meet 
ever. There is one scene, though, where the two Xaviers talk to each other in a really good and dramatic scene. Really love that. But the casts work well off of one another. And of course, it's a modern day X-Men film, so all of the weight is placed upon Hubert Jackman as Wolverine. And God, Hugh Jackman, I am going to miss him as Wolverine, man. I talked about it in Logan, how just good he is as that character. He's great in here. He carries a good majority of this film, mainly because it focuses on him. He is the one who is sent back in time because he's the one who can physically make the trip. Really good explanation about why he is the one going back in time and not Kitty Pride, who, if you don't know, was the one who went back in time in the comic arc. It is kind of funny, though, that she kind of just magically gained the ability to send people back in time. As far as the films go, she never had that ability until this movie. So I just kind of find that funny. Like, oh, in between X-Men 3 and now, she got the ability to send people back in time. Okay, I'll roll with it. As I said, I love Hugh Jackman as Logan. But man, the standout performances, aside from him, are McAvoy and Fassbender as Xavier and Lyncher, respectively. They are both great. McAvoy, I think, is better than Fassbender, really, in this film, because you really feel for what Xavier is going through. He is essentially a heroin junkie in this film. And just the way that McAvoy can just give such a subtle performance of how this kind of drug that's preventing him from having his powers but being able to make him walk is affecting him psychologically. I just love his performance. And Fassbender is great too. I love his performance as Magneto in virtually anything. That scene where they're on the plane and they're both yelling at each other about who left who, who ran away, who's really the man and who's a coward, that scene is great because of those actors. Just their gravitas and how they both command the screen. It's amazing. It's one of the most dramatic scenes in any comic book film, and it's great. Really, that's my main praise for this film, is the fact that it's so dramatic, and there's actual weight to what's going on on the characters and their psychological perspective on things. It's not just action for action's sake, like a lot of other comic book films are. Like, kind of, X-Men 3 was. Or, to an extent, the first X-Men, kind of. This film actually has gravitas and weight to it, and I love that. However, that's not to say this film doesn't have action. It's a comic book film, of course it's going to have action. And the action scenes here, they're few. However, when they do show up, they're great. They're masterfully choreographed, their visual effects are great. You actually feel for the characters when they get involved in these action scenes. Except when it's in the future. The movie throws you into it with an action scene. Of course, it's a comic book film, but you don't know any of those mutants except for Colossus and Kitty Pride. Unless you're like me and you did research before the film and you know all their names. If the movie doesn't tell you their names, I don't think. Maybe in like a dropped line or something. I think Bishop says Sunspot at one point when he wants Sunspot's power. But you don't really feel for those characters, although it is intriguing because you're thinking, hey, they're killing everyone in the first action scene. How are they going to resolve this? Oh, time travel. Yeah, I forgot. It's a time travel movie. Haha, <laughs> how did I not realize that? Other than that, though, all the other action scenes in this film are really good. The future stuff, yeah, it's shot a little bit dark, and some of it's kind of hard to see at some points, but man, a lot of those action scenes are just so great. The prison breakout, when they have to break uh, Magneto out of the Pentagon is great. Featuring one of the best scenes in, in any comic book film. The Quicksilver scene as he's running around the kitchen. Ah, masterfully done. And the version of time in a bottle that they use is perfect. I just rewatched Hobbs and Shaw the other day. They use time in a bottle for that film. And I think it's a remix because it sounds like trash. The version used here, good. Drama, great. Characters, great. Plot's really good. It's a standard time travel story. It's like Terminator, but in the X-Men universe. I actually think this provides a really, like, plausible time travel scenario. You know, Kitty Pryde's not sending back Wolverine's entire body back in time. She's sending his consciousness back. And when Wolverine wakes up, then whatever he has done will take hold. That actually is kind of plausible. 
Could it ever happen in real life? Probably not. Does it make sense for this film? Yeah. So I like the new and inventive use of time travel in this film. Although the X-Men timeline is pretty messed up. I mean, it was messed up before this movie came out. It's a running joke that the X-Men timeline is just in shambles because it is. No one knows when events have taken place because the writers have just ignored everything to that's been established in previous films so they just said screw it we're gonna write our own story here though they try to fix it brian singer tries to fix the film film's timeline but man they just didn't listen to him i mean he fixed it to an extent but man the writers of apocalypse and logan and everything else after this film didn't listen to what singer did i mean should they really though from what i've heard what brian singer did <laughs> is um not exactly too great but I'm not judging his film based on that. You know, I can separate art from the artist. Also, I have a theory about what goes on in the final battle. Magneto grabs the X-Men airplane and throws it towards the Sentinel ships that are coming towards them. And Storm makes it explode, killing a lot of the robots that are coming to kill them. Magneto, though, stops a lot of the debris from coming back and stabbing any of the X-Men. However, Magneto gets stabbed. You would think he would be able to stop that. And I think that he could have. But I think that Magneto wanted to get stabbed. Because Magneto has been established as being kind of an egotistical maniac. <laughs> like, even d during the futuristic war with these robots, I think Magneto wanted to go out on his own terms. I don't think he wanted to be killed. I think he wanted to go out the way that he wanted to go out. So he let himself be stabbed. I don't think he wanted to give the Sentinels the glory of being able to kill him. That's just my theory. I don't know. I think he was stabbed, honestly, to provide some more tension, as if this climax wasn't already filled with tension. That's just my fan theory. Go with it. Don't go with it. I don't really care. You saw in the close-up that I own the 3D collector's version of X-Men Days of Future Past with the replica helmet and everything, and I just love that. I love that I found it for so cheap at FYE. That was a great, that was a great find. So yeah, I do recommend X-Men Days of Future Past. Up until Logan, it was the best X-Men film, and it's still the best X-Men team film. Logan is the best film based on an X-Men character, but, but Days of Future Past is the best film based on the X-Men team. If that makes any sense. I love Logan more than this, but man, this was a solid film. And the sad part about this is, not a lot of people talk about this nowadays. D D Days of Future Past, I don't think has been completely forgotten, but not a lot of people bring it up when they talk about the best comic book movies ever made. This is one of the best. Some people are probably going to ask about my uh, opinion on the Rogue Cut, and why didn't I cover the Rogue Cut in this HMR? Well, because the Rogue Cut is a different film, sort of. I have seen the Rogue Cut. I own the Rogue Cut. Do I think it's good? Eh. It's alright. It gives Rogue more of a reason to be here. I mean, rather than just a cameo in the theatrical cut. But it adds about 20 to 25 minutes that didn't really need to be there. Essentially, what the Rogue Cut adds is the X-Men have to go, in the future, go to the X-Mansion to rescue Rogue, who's being experimented on, because when Wolverine cuts Kitty Pride, she can't go on. She's lost too much blood, so they have to go and get Rogue to replace her. It's another action scene, and I just don't feel like it works. Not in the overall flow of the film. Am I happy that we have it? Am I happy that we got to see that footage? Yeah, I'm happy that I have it, but... Do I prefer it over the theatrical? No, I prefer the theatrical. It's lean, and it just works. Number four, where should you pick this product up? Well, check your local FYE to see if they have any of those collector's versions out there, because that Magneto helmet's pretty slick, bro. Uh, but honestly, you're going to want to look online for this, because even if you find it at Best Buy, they have it overpriced. The Beginnings Trilogy at Best Buy right now Last time I saw it was sitting at $40, which when the X-Men trilogy came out on 4K, the original X-Men trilogy, 
I got that at Walmart for a little less than 30. So the Beginnings Trilogy is definitely not worth 40 because it has subpar films. I'm talking about Apocalypse. Though I guess X-Men 3 and Apocalypse would kind of be on the same scale. For me, I mean, they're both not very good. Yeah, I've kind of turned on Apocalypse. I know I was a big, like, guys, Apocalypse isn't that bad back when it first came out. But upon rewatchings, eh, it's not the best thing ever. I never thought it was better than Days of Future Past or First Class for that matter, but yikes. That is a flawed movie. And number five, what price should you pay? For the standard Blu-ray, any standard Blu-ray really, 10 maybe for that. If you can get it cheaper than that, that's better. But the highest I would go for that is about 10 to 15. 3D Blu-ray, I'm not sure why you would want that over the regular Blu-ray because home 3D stinks. Uh, but for the collector's version, heck yeah. Uh, I got mine for about 25 brand new in the package from FYE, so 25 to 30 for that. That'd be cool. Be even cooler if you didn't already own the movie. Because <laughs> uh, I like to double dip, apparently. I like wasting money. It's going to be bad when I live on my own and I'm going to be like, oh, I wasted this month's rent on X-Men Days of Future Past Collector's Editions and Marvel Statues. Help! <laughs> and for any of the DVDs... 5 to 10, you know? You shouldn't even want a DVD, because DVD sucks. So that is my HMR on X-Men, Days of Future Past. Every time I rewatch this movie, I am just astounded by how good it is. I forget how good this movie is, and I really enjoy it every time I sit down and give it a rewatch. So next week is kind of an anomaly, because this movie that we're going to cover next week, I never expected to like. I had it recommended to me by multiple people, and one... Faithful Day, I picked it up from Walmart for five bucks on DVD and watched it on a trip to Hilton Head and just instantly fell in love with it. And that movie is Star Trek from 2009. Some of my Star Wars fans are probably thinking, oh, he's cheating on Star Wars with Star Trek. Look, you can like both. I've seen the first three Star Trek films. The first one is terrible. The original one from like the 60s or whatever that was based on the TV show. That thing is an abomination. I don't know why I'm talking about Star Trek. End the episode, Lego Lover. Okay, the episode's over. Star Trek 2009. Be there. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, good night, everybody.